rise and go to Jesus. He will embrace me in his arms, in the arms of Christ my Savior. Good morning. I'd like to welcome those who watch this TV program to stay with us and be blessed by the preaching of God's Word. In 1 Corinthians, the Bible says that God chose the foolishness of preaching to save them that believe. We have a, a God that, who is the Almighty God. He is all, the all-powerful God, and there is none like Him. And He's the only true and living God that there is. All other gods are dead, whether they be made of wood or stone or stubble or gold or silver. They're dead gods. They cannot hear the cries of the children, nor can they be touched by the infirmities that the children go through. But we have a God who can do both of those things. And he heard the cries of his children many times from the Old Testament to the New. And one time he heard the cry of his children and he sent his son Jesus to come. In Matthew chapter 1, the Bible says he came to save his people from their sins. Sins will separate us from God and separate us for all eternity. And we'll all spend eternity in a lake of fire. God heard the cries of his children and he was touched by the infirmities that we have gone through. And God acted upon that sent His only begotten Son to lay His life down for us. So we have an almighty God. He is all-powerful. The Son of God, Jesus, He is a part of the Godhead. He is all-powerful. The Holy Spirit of God is a part of the Godhead. And He is all-powerful. And then we have the Word of God. In Hebrews chapter 4, and verse 12, the Bible says, that it is powerful, it is alive, and it is sharper than any two-edged sword. We have all that power, the Christian does. The moment that you and I repent of our sins and are baptized into Jesus Christ to have those sins washed away and to receive the gift of God's Holy Spirit, and we receive the Word of God which instructs us how to live in the presence of our God, we have all the power that we need. God has given all the power that we need. And I'm telling you, from God on down, excuse me, to the church, which is the kingdom of God, God has given the church power. The kingdom of God has power over this world. We have the power to take God's word and judge the world with it. When we do that, it's an effort, it's an attempt to get them to turn from their wicked ways as Noah did and turn to Jesus Christ before it's too late. So you see, we have power as Christians today in the Lord's church and His kingdom. And that power is extended on to every Christian. In Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 17, Paul said, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You and I are in a war. There's God on one hand and Satan on the other hand. And there's a battle going on there between God and Satan. God wants to influence you and me to come to Him. Satan wants to influence you and me to come to Him. And that, ball, that, that war continues to go on today. And the battlefield is our minds, you see. And the one that we take heed most to, mostly to, is the one that we follow, or is the one that we allow to have the most influence in our lives. I'm telling you this morning as a Christian that we're in a battle, the battle for truth, the truth that's in God's Word. Not man's truth, but the truth that's in God's Word. And we're in a war. And in a war you fight and you battle. Yeah, I know they don't teach that in a lot of places that you're not, you're not in a war and you don't fight as Christians. But I'm telling you, the Bible teaches that we do. We don't fight against flesh and blood. 
But we fight against spiritual wickedness, you see. We fight against that influence that Satan tries to have on you and me. And it's continued to go on. But God has given us weapons to fight in that battle. He has given us uh, the armor of God. And one of those armors is the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. You and I this morning, God has given us the authority. Okay? He has given us the authority above all authority to take His Word, which is the sword of the Spirit, and fight in that battle for truth. How do you do that? Well, you open up and you study it. You become knowledgeable in the Word of God. You become a good warrior in this war. And you do battle against that which is against the truth that you find in God's Word. You do battle against it. And so every person you come in contact with, whatever they might say to you, if it is opposed to God's Word, you're to take the sword and start slicing with the Word of God. You see. Didn't Jesus say He came not to bring peace, but daughter against mother and son against father and etc., etc., etc.? Yeah. We're to take the Word of God and we're to start cutting with it. You know, I, I praise God that Someone took the sword of the Spirit and cut me with it. See, there was a circumcision, a spiritual circumcision that took place on my heart. I opened it up and God looked in there and seen all the bad. Cut it out. See, now I have a pure and clean heart when I was baptized into Jesus Christ. Because someone took the sword of the Spirit and joined in the battleful truth and began slicing me with it. And that's what we need to be thinking about as Christian soldiers. Taking the Word of God, which is the sword of Spirit, and slicing people with it. You see, the Word of God will cut out all the corruption, all the evil in a person's life if we will do the slicing with it. You see? In uh, Revelation chapter 21, if you'll turn over there with me, please. There is nothing right or wrong unless God says it is. Okay? I can say something's right or wrong and it'd be my opinion. And then you can say something's right or wrong and be your opinion. And your opinion is just as good as mine. They both ain't worth a hill of beans. In God's eyes, when God says something's right or wrong, that's when it truly is, okay? And so, <clears throat> God has spoken uh, in Revelation chapter 21, starting with verse 8. It says, But the fearful and unbelieving and abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is a second death. God has spoken on wickedness and evilness, that which takes place. You know, people, we as people of the world, sometimes we let things slide, don't we? We do. Especially if it's in our family. You know, someone's close to us. You know, they might go out and do something wrong and we'll kind of take up for them. We don't do it all the time, but it's... Normally we do a little bit. God doesn't do that, my friend. Not even if you're a Christian. He doesn't do that. Yeah, you have to repent. He'll shed His grace on you if you'll repent. But if you don't repent, there is no grace. You see, a Christian, when they sin against God, when they fall short of His glory, the Bible teaches that we need to repent and confess our sins to Jesus. And He's just and faithful to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9 says. So God doesn't sweep it under the rug. We still have a responsibility in being pure and holy in the presence of our God. And how do you do that? By taking and studying God's Word. Being filled with God's Word. Because in the pages of God's Word is holiness. And our God is holy. He says, Be ye holy. For I am holy. God has spoken. Cannot be changed. 
But in the matter of the wickedness that goes on in this world today, the Bible says the fearful, the unbelieving, the abominable, the murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and liars shall have their part in the lake which burnt with fire and brimstone. There's a word in there I'd like this to pay closer attention to. Abominable or abominations. In God's eyes. In verse 27. Let's turn, go on through that chapter to verse 27. And there shall in no wise enter into it or the kingdom of God or the eternal kingdom of God. And there shall no in the wise enter into it anything that defileth neither whatsoever worketh abomination or maketh a lie, but they which are written in the Lamb's book of life. Get your Bible open, Kirsten. So nothing will enter into the church, nothing will enter into the eternal kingdom, that anything that worketh abomination. So we need, we need to understand that, that word abomination. God hates it. Proverbs writer talks about it. God hates seven things, but so they're an abomination to him. Let's go to Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 13, if you would please. Now this affects every one of us, but I believe it affects our kids more because our kids, and rightly so, do not have the the, the secured being grounded in the truth. And see, that our kids have to go to these public schools and they have to be around this all the time. Because in our public schools, not only in our public schools, but in other places, it's taught that we are to treat homosexuals the same as anyone else. Well, the Bible does not teach that, my friend. God does not teach that. I don't care what professor it is, what president it is, what king it is. I don't care if it's the richest man in the world or richest woman in the world. I don't care what teacher it is, what principal it is. God is over them. They're going to stand before God one day and give an account to Him for what they've done in their body, whether it be good or bad. They're going to be held accountable for the things that they say and what they teach. And our kids are among that all the time. And our kids wonder sometimes, well, mom and dad, how am I supposed to deal with this situation? And they go to school and they're taught, you treat them like you do everybody else. That's normal way of life. You love them. You accept them. Well, the Bible just don't teach that. If it did, I would do that. But it doesn't. And if I go against God's word, guess what? I'll go to hell too. I'll spend eternity in a lake of fire. And so will you. So it's important to understand that God, when he says something right and wrong, that's when it is. Not when man says it is. And I'm telling you this morning that the Bible teaches, God teaches that homosexuality is wrong, Period. It don't matter what a teacher says. don't matter what a principal says. don't matter what a governor or a lawyer says, what a king or a president says. God says it's wrong, period. And you can't make nothing else out of that. Homosexuality is sin. I like to tell you a story. We have a billboard out here in this yard. And I put up a, a saying on it. God loves the men and the women, but he hates the sin of homosexuality. And then I put down the verses of scriptures in the Bible to back up what I'm saying. And uh, I come on a Wednesday night and all the words are torn down, thrown on the ground. So I put it all back up again. Come back Sunday morning, it's all down on the ground again. So I put them all back up again. And then I come back on Wednesday night and they turned it around. They said, God hates the man and woman and loves the sin of homosexuality. You see, that's an abomination to the Lord. He does not love the sin of homosexuality, my friend. He hates it. And he talks about it in his word, how much he hates it. 
And it's time for the people, especially in the church, to begin to open up the Bible and see what God says about it. It's time for the people in the church to open up the Bible and study it and become prepared for when you're talking to someone who's involved in homosexuality, you know how to battle with it. You know how, what to do with it. You know what to tell them. And you'll be able to tell them what God says. You don't have to tell them a whole bunch of uh, stuff, what we think and what you think and what everybody thinks. Just tell them what God says and leave it alone. That ought to be enough. If it's going to turn that person around, it's God because you told them what God said. You know, when we tell people what we think about every situation, it don't do nothing. It just heats it up more and more. They get angry at us, we get angry then. They get more angry at us, we get more angry then. I'm telling you, the Bible says, God says, vengeance belongs to me, saith the Lord. We need to leave it alone and just tell them what God says. And then he'll have the vengeance. He'll do, uh, bring the wrath of his wrath upon them. You see, that's why we need to do it. That's what the Bible teaches. And if you do it any other way, Christian, you're sinning against God. Because he has spoken on the situation already. You and I don't have a right to tell people what we think of them. We have a right to tell them what God thinks of them. Okay? And I'll tell you why. Because every one of us was lost and outside of Jesus Christ. And there's a whole world telling us what they think of us. But God don't care. The only thing that's going to matter when we stand before him one day is what he thinks. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 13. We're going to see what God thinks about homosexuality, okay? Not what I think and what you think. We'll see what God thinks. By the way, <laughs> when we're done reading here, what we think about it doesn't even compare what God thinks about it. If a man also lie with mankind... Okay, man with a man, homosexuality. As he lie with, lieth with a woman, both of them have committed an abomination. Wow, we read that back in Revelation chapter 21. They have both committed abomination. Now listen to what God says here. They shall surely be put to death, and their blood shall be upon them. God has spoken. When I talk to homosexuality, I don't need to say anything else. <laughs> they know it now. It's in their hand. The ball's in their hand to do something about it. If they don't, God says he'll have vengeance. Not Jay Jones, nor you. In Leviticus chapter 18, if you'll turn over there with me, please. <clears throat> Now I know our kids cannot go to school, <laughs> take a Bible, or go to school and remember what they've read, and start just start speaking these in the school. There'd be nothing wrong if they did. But would they be able to deal with it though? Doubt it. I don't think they're mature enough to deal with it. So the responsibility lays in mom's and dad's hands and grandma's and grandpa's hands. We're to be behind them and help them, okay? How can you do it if you don't know? Would be the question. How can you do it if you're afraid? Okay? That's all God's saying. He wants His people. You've got the power. you got everything you need to say to Him. He wants you to use it. You were soldiers of the cross. We are in a war. 
It's time for the church to look at it that way. Chapter 18, Leviticus, Leviticus and verse 22. Neither shalt thou lie with any beast that defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast to lie down there too. It is confusion. Let's see if I'm in the right place here. Okay, verse 22. I'm sorry. Thou shalt not lie with mankind as with womankind. It is an abomination. Back in Revelation 21, it says that God hates abomination. No one will enter in to the eternal kingdom that commits abomination to the Lord. It isn't going to happen, my friend. God has spoken. It don't matter whether we believe it or not, He has spoken. Now, our kids go to school. We are uh, around uh, people like that, whether they recognize it or not, even the transgenders. I'm telling you, God has given us what we need to speak unto these people. And we need to be saying what God says to them. Because there's power in God's Word. There ain't no power in Jay's Word. I can say what I think on a whole lot of things. There ain't no power in it. But there's power in God's Word when you speak it. Because every time someone listens to God's Word when spoken, faith is created in their heart. Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing, by hearing the Word of God. Yeah, it'll even change homosexuals. It has. First, uh, <clears throat> 2 Corinthians, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 9, the Bible says that uh, there were those who were homosexuals, but when they heard the word of God, it changed them. They became servants of God. 1 Corinthians chapter uh, 6 and verse 9. And they changed like any other. What about thief on the cross? They both railed on Jesus. But when he heard the words of God come out of Jesus' mouth, he, faith was created in his heart. And he wanted to go be with Jesus then. I'm telling you, we live in a lost and dying world. And we need to be speaking the word of God because there's power in it. And it will change their lives. I know there are many people saying, once a murderer, always a murderer. Once a drunk, always a drunk. Once you have been so wicked, you can't change. Well, where did you get that at? I'd like to know. You didn't get it from God and His Word. I'm telling you, all the people and all the wickedness that they're involved in, we hear about, there are people changing every day because of the Word of God. It changes them. There's power in it. And if you don't think it will, well, you don't have very good faith in the Lord. Your trust in the Lord is not very good. You do not believe what the Word of God says. And there's a problem in your Christian life, you see. Deuteronomy chapter 23. And verse 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of sons of Israel. Okay, with Sodom and Gomorrah, what happened? The angels came to Lot's house. They knocked on Lot, the, the people of, of the city knocked on Lot's door. We send in two males Come to your house, send them out to us that we may know them. That statement that we may know them means that they want to have sexual intercourse with them. Okay? Males with males. And the angels would not let, and, and Lot was going to send his daughter out so they would not bother the angels. And the angels knew what Lot was thinking. He wouldn't allow it to happen. And God, when he got Lot and his family out of there, those who went, God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah with fire and brimstone from heaven. I'm telling you, God thinks about it the same way today. 
Here in 2019, it don't matter whether you're in Africa or one of the seven continents on this earth, in America, God still feels that way about homosexuality. He hasn't changed on it. Right now, see, God will extend his grace to that person if they will repent and be baptized, have that sin washed away, have their sins washed away. He will extend his grace to them also. They can be saved, but they've got to turn from that wicked way or they won't be saved. Now I know we have, uh, I watch uh, the TV stations of Louisville, we have parades taking place where homosexuals and lesbians and transgenders, they're all marching down the street, making the whole city known that this is a way of life, it's okay with God, join in with us, quit, uh, uh, quit showing hate toward us, but love us like everybody else. Well, let's let God work that out. Let's don't work that out between ourselves. Let's let God work it out. And I'm telling you, God's already got it worked out. Okay? He's already spoken on the subject. When they walk in those parades down the streets of Louisville or wherever they might be, they're showing how ignorant they are of God and His Word. They're showing that they would rather have Satan influence them than the one who died for them. And you see, my friend, that's the way we need to look at it. We need to look at these people that they're lost and they're going to go to hell. But what about when it influences your children? You know, they've got to go to school and there might be one sitting next to them and what are they supposed to do? Well, mom and dad says it's wrong. The preacher says it's wrong. Well, no, well, the teachers say the Bible says it's wrong. Okay? God says it's wrong. And the way they do, they get in trouble. You know, the teacher might scold them a little bit. And if they keep it up, well then they'll go crying to the teacher and the principal and mom and dad and the mom and dad get involved. And then they'll say, well, this person hates everyone. It's a hate crime. And that, that, that child will be marked because they're simply doing what God says. Now what's our children going to do? What are we allowing to happen to them? What are we doing? We're sending our kids out in, in the midst of wolves. And we don't supply them with what they need to combat. Yeah, I don't believe for a minute God wants our kids to go to these here schools. And especially when we're all made up of homosexuals and lesbians and transgenders. And it's okay to do this sin, okay to do that sin. Everything's okay. I don't believe for one minute God wants our kids to go to those places. It'd be no different sending them to an occult. It'd be no different sending them to a place where uh, the man's supposed to be the preacher. He's God. You do what I say. And all the children uh, <clears throat> are abused sexually. And it's okay. There's places like that. I don't believe our, our um, public schools are too much different from that. But yet we make them go. And we get on our kids because they act like this or they say this or they do that. And we get on them. And yet we put them right in the middle of it. We ought to be ashamed of ourselves as moms and dads. We put them in there and then we don't like what they do and what they say. Well, get them out of there then if you don't like it. There's other ways. I have we become too complacent in America to teach our kids at home? There are many that do that. Is your kids too much of a burden to take them home and teach them? I thought you loved them. I believe that's what God is saying right now. Okay? Are we too selfish? You know, I want my time to myself. I don't want to spend all that time with the kids. It drive me nuts. Now we've all said that, haven't we? And they do sometimes. But our love for them ought to overcome that. We ought to be looking down the road, the future for our kids. What they're going to be when they become adults. What they're going to stand for. I pray that they don't get involved in this abomination. 
It's all around us. How can they escape it? Moms and dads, you've got to get involved. Grandma and grandpas, you've got to get involved. Tell them what God says. Give them the reassurance that they need from God's Word. And then we will be in the battle for truth. Okay? Using the sword of the Spirit. Now, I know people don't like to hear that. I tell you what, homosexual and stuff like that is so rampant. It's all around so much. It's rooted deep. That people say when you, when you talk from God's Word about it, that that's hate talk. They call the Bible a hate Bible. They call God a hate God when they talk about homosexuality. When they say it's wrong. Yeah, that's what they did. They turned it around. And the Bible talks about that when, they turn, uh, when the people turn things around. They call that which is uh, bad good and that which is good bad. The Bible says that. And that's what's happening. And the church needs to wake up and see it. How many TV shows are we going to watch that has homosexuality in it and you sit there and enjoy it? I'm telling you, God says it's wrong. It's an abomination to Him. And they will not enter into the kingdom of heaven. You may have loved ones who are involved in homosexuality. For Christ's sakes, tell them what God says. Get them out of it if you can. If you love them, if you don't love them, guess what you're going to do? You say, stay there, go to hell. I don't care. In Romans chapter 1. We ought to be praying for Mike Brydenball and Rick Brydenball because they teach on this. Okay? They get on the radio and teach on it. They have correspondence lessons that teach on it. They have CDs that they teach on it. We need to be praying for those guys so they will continue in the battle for truth. Romans chapter 1, starting with verse 18. The Apostle Paul is an inspired writer of God. The Holy Spirit enabled Paul to write this message. Now this message came from heaven. Yeah, when you open up the book of Romans and all the other books and start reading them, you're reading heavenly messages. Not when you get on TV and on the computer and, and you, you see some good saints that have angels next to them or flowers next to them and sounds good. Them's not heavenly messages. Them's emotional messages. Cause you to be emotional. God deals in facts, my friend. That old movie Dragnet. Just the facts, man. Just the facts. And I tell you, that's what the Bible's all about. Facts. The facts. Paul is speaking here. He wrote this letter. And it's a heavenly message. This message come down from that dear spiritual kingdom. That heavenly place where God is. And it will be a great joy to be able to read a heavenly message. Paul says, starting in verse 18, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven. Okay? The wrath of God is revealed from heaven against... He's already spoken. Against... All ungodliness and unrighteousness of men. Okay? All the ungodliness and righteousness of men. God's wrath has been revealed from heaven against all that. Think about it. Yeah, homosexuality is involved in it. Yeah, he's against it. His wrath is revealed. If you don't ever hear or read in the Bible about the wrath of God, that's your fault, my friend. But this morning, if you're listening, you're going to hear it. You're going to, you're going to hear just how God feels about it, what He thinks about it, and what He's going to do about it. <clears throat> For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth 
in unrighteousness. Because that which may be known of God is manifested in them. For God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God. Neither were thankful, but became vain in their imagination. Their foolish heart was darkened. I'm telling you that the homosexuality group, the LG, whatever you want to call them, that group where men lie with men and women with women, they get married to one another and transgenders, men who want to be women, women who want to be men, I'm telling you God has revealed his wrath against all that. They claim that they know God. Yeah, we've got so-called churches who says that God loves the homosexual just like he does anybody else. It's okay for them to come in and be preachers and elders and this and that in the church. God does not say no such a thing. Nor does the Bible teach it. It's a lie. And I tell you, it comes from the devil because he's a liar. And the Bible says he's the father of it. They knew God, but they glorified Him not as God. Became vain in their imagination. Wow. That's what they did. Professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Yeah, they, they in their eyes are wise. But in God's eyes, they're fools. And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image, made like unto corruptible man, to birds, four-footed beasts, and creeping things. I'm telling you, a whole lot of sinners in the world today, even homosexualities, give more credence and respect to animals than they do God. To the one that died for him, laid his life down for him. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness, see? You give God up, guess what he's going to do? He's going to give you up. You turn from God, guess what he's going to do? From old to the new, it says it. He'll turn from you. Turn your back on God, he'll turn his back on you. You leave God, he'll leave you. That's exactly what the Bible teaches. Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves. <laughs> How much plainer can it be? This is a message from heaven. God has spoken on it. If you're a homosexual this morning, or lesbian, or transgender, if you're involved in this, listen to what God has to say about it before it's too late. You see, we're going to die sometime. When you die, it's too late to change things. Or Jesus is going to come back. He's promised to come back, and he will. When he comes back, it's too late to change things. God has given every person the opportunity right now to make things right with him. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. Anytime you say that God loves the sin of homosexuality, you change the truth into a lie. Because the truth said is he doesn't. He don't love the sin of homosexuality. When they say he does, they change the truth into a lie. Who changed the truth into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Amen. You know, in all these different types of groups of people, there's always ringleaders keeping the fire going. Okay? If you separate these homosexuals and these lesbians away from the ringleaders, then they're not so strong, okay? Then their mind is not so made up on it. And I want you to know this morning, I don't care what anybody says, I've talked to homosexuals before. <clears throat> they're all suicidal. Every homosexual is suicidal. Every lesbian is suicidal. Every transgender person is suicidal. Why? Because God did not create them that way. 
Okay? He didn't create them that way. He didn't create them to be able to, their minds and their bodies have to go through that, deal with that, put up with that. I've talked to homosexuals. <laughs> At one time they're upbeat and next time they're talking about taking their life. They're tired of living. They're tired of it. Things aren't right with them. I'm telling you, friend, if you're mixed up in homosexuality and, you're, and that's the way it is with you sometimes, why don't you just get out of it and come to God? And He will secure you. He'll fill you with His Word and His Spirit. He will help you to have a goal of going to heaven someday and spend eternity with Him. That's what He wants. He's written these things down to open our eyes up when we read it. How can more plain can it be? Those who lie with men as they do with a woman, they're both to be put to death. And their blood is upon them, no one else. How much plainer can it be? I mean, when you read that there, it's speaking to you. He goes on to say, in verse 26 of Romans chapter 1, for this cause God gave them up to vile affections. Not just affections, but vile affections. I mean, it's the worst, rotten sins that there is. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Well, he thought, lesbians thought she was going to get out of it, didn't you? And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, Burn to the lust one toward another, men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error that was meet or due to them. I remember watching the news one time. These men were playing basketball. It was a hot day. And this other guy was coming down the street. One of the guys run off the basketball court, went up and hugged him, gave him a big old kiss on the lips. Made me sick. Well, that's what that's talking about. Change the natural use. Men with men. Leaving that natural use of the woman. Women are beautiful. God made them that way. God created the man and the woman to get married, to have sexual intercourse, have children, raise a family, and it's all beautiful. That's the way God made it. The last verse of chapter 1, the Bible says, On the sixth day God saw that everything that he had made, that it was very good. And I tell you, man cannot improve upon that. Homosexuals cannot improve upon that. Lesbians cannot improve upon that. Cannot be improved upon. It's been changed. You have changed God's word. You have changed the truth into a lie if you're involved in the sin of homosexuality. And you need to repent and come out of that. Come to God. Verse 28, And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, do you know that I could go talk to them? I, I could go spend a thousand dollars on them, treat them to the best meal there is, and, and uh, just be as nice as I can to them. At some time point, excuse me, some time and point, I'd have to talk to him about what the Bible says. Do you know that would be the time that we depart? Most generally that will happen. Because they don't want to retain God in their knowledge. Even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventor of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful, who knowing the judgment of God that they which commit such things are worthy of death, physical death and spiritual death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Real quick, let's turn to Ephesians chapter 5. And I'm going to stop.
starting with verse 1. <clears throat> it's talking to the church, to Christians. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ ha also has loved us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. But fornication and all uncleanliness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become of saints, neither filthiness nor foolish talking or jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. For this you know that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth, proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. That ought to be enough instruction for the Christian, God's people, to want to study God's Word and find out what it is that God wants us to say to these people when we come in contact with them. And not what we want to say. It's hard to change sometimes. We get so involved in this stuff and we're so used to saying what we think. It's hard to get out of that and, and just say what God thinks. You see? If we're ever going to win people to Christ, we've got to tell them what God says. What Jesus says. Or it's not going to happen. This morning, if you're not a Christian, the Bible says you need to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. By believing that message, one repents of their sins. Repentance is a change of mind and conduct toward the way that you're living and turn towards God. The Bible says one must be baptized by immersion to have their sins washed away and to receive the gift or the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. Not to help you speak in tongues and do miracles, but to help you live a faithful life unto Jesus and His Word unto the end. If you are a Christian this morning, God through His Word, through the Holy Spirit, is nudge, nudging at your heart. You know that you're not practicing what the Bible says about this here subject the way God wants you to. Well, that's sin. That's disobedience. You need to repent and start doing what the Bible teaches. Tell them what God says. If you don't repent, you'll be lost. Simple as that. There is no grace without repentance. You'll be lost. You need to repent and do what God says.